Folks, great to join you. It's Friday evening. I'm just about to leave the house to head to Dublin for the weekend. There'll be so many folk that we'll meet on the streets, broken folk, homeless folk, drug addicts. And really, we don't need to be going to Dublin to meet them folk. But that's where we will be this weekend. But I want to share with you, just before I leave, a message that I was given today by an addict to share tonight. Then I want to bring to you a verse. And I have been simply asked by this addict who has found Jesus Christ. I have been asked, will you share this message with your friends and with your family? He doesn't mind me mentioning his name. He'll be watching this video. I'm not betraying his confidence or his trust. His name is John. He's got three weeks to live. He's been in hospital. They can do nothing more medically for him. His liver is destroyed. A transplant won't even prolong his life. And I quote to you what he has asked me to share. Mark, I had an insatiable thirst for drink 24-7. Whenever I got money, I wanted to drink. Oh, if I had only trusted Jesus Christ 20 years ago, I wouldn't have put her, referring to his wife, pointing at her, through what I've put her through. I wouldn't have put them, the kids, referring to them. I wouldn't have put them through what I've put them through. But I know now that Jesus Christ is the only answer. The only answer to my thirst. He's the only answer to my addiction. And whoever watches your wee videos, Mark, I want them to know that Jesus Christ is their only hope. If they're struggling with drink like me, tell them that Jesus Christ is the only answer. Don't have them waste any more of their lives seeking drink, drugs, sex, pornography. They need Jesus Christ. And so that's John's message to you. You see, John's one of many that I will meet. Tomorrow in the streets of Dublin, there will be people sitting at every street corner with little bags, either sleeping bags or plastic bags over them. And folks, if I'm speaking to a Christian tonight and you're a pious Pharisee Christian, do you know what I mean by that? One that thinks that you can cross over to the other side of the street and bypass them. Can I tell you that behind every face is a story and behind every story is a need and behind every need is an answer that is needed to meet that need and his name is Jesus Christ and you've got to. You've got to share the message of Jesus with them, dear people. You see, I can relate to John because I am a recovering addict myself. Not alcohol, not drugs, but pornography. And so many people, especially Christians, they don't want to hear that word mentioned. But can I tell you, I want you to know that I struggled with an addiction of pornography for over 20 years. And I felt no one else struggled like me. But Jesus Christ came at the point of my need and he met me and he set me free. Yes, I have two wonderful men and they won't mind me mentioning them. The Reverend Jim Hagan, a wonderful brother in the Lord. Chris Cordner, another man that came into my life that didn't take any old nonsense, that just hit me with hard hitting questions without pulling any punches. And them two men journeyed with me and they helped me with prayer and with help to find freedom from pornography, to help me break through from my addiction. I have my wee bag that will be taken to Dublin. Hope you can see that. Trapped, finding freedom from pornography. And maybe you're a Christian. Yes, did you hear me correctly? Maybe you're a Christian. And when your wife hits bed early, you stay downstairs and you tell her that you're doing some work on the computer or doing some stuff on your phone that's for work. But you're trapped. You're watching pornography. 
Folks, I want to tell you, come on. Let's come clean right now. John wants you to come clean. I want you to come clean. And if you're a Christian and you're trapped, will you get in touch with me? Get in touch with the folk on the Facebook page on Luck Brick, with Luck Brickland. Get in touch with them. I would love to journey with you and help you find freedom from your addiction. It could be pornography. It could be drink. It could be drugs. It could be money. Whatever the addiction is, it's holding you back. And I want you to know that Jesus Christ is your only hope. John, I know you're watching. I've shared your message, your story with the people this night. And I pray that they will share it with their friends. You want them to know before you go into God's eternity in a few weeks time that Jesus Christ has freed you from your addiction and you're born again of the Spirit of God and your thirst has been quenched by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I just want to read, before I leave the house, I want to read an amazing verse. I, sh I shared it with John. Because this verse is wonderful and I'm going to paint to you the picture of what's happening here. And then you'll understand why Jesus Christ says what he says. It's John 7. The verse is 37. Grab your Bible. In fact, you read the whole of John 7. It's a wonderful chapter. I'll refer to a few things in it. But it's this verse that I want to leave with you. Now on the final and the most important day of the feast... Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. <laughs> what a verse. If any man's thirsty. Am I speaking to a man tonight and you have an insatiable thirst, something within your very heart? And you've tried everything. You've tried woman. You've tried sex. You've tried pornography. You've tried the drink. You've tried the cigarettes. You've tried the nicotine patches. You've tried it all. And still within you is that thirst. And you're seeking after something. And you don't know what it is. I want to tell you. It's Jesus Christ you need. It's Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can satisfy the thirst. Now let me paint to you the picture so you know why Jesus said what he said in John 7, 37. When you read John 7, 37, the people are about to leave to go up to Jerusalem for the feast. It's the Feast of Tabernacles, a seven day long feast when the people of Israel camped out in little booths made with branches, made with trees. They were celebrating that wonderful time when God supplied them water and quenched their thirst. In the wilderness. But when you read John 7. It talks about Jesus Christ and his brothers. Yes. That is right. And I know out there some people believe. That Mary had no other children. She had only Jesus Christ. And she was the blessed Virgin Mary. That had only one son. But let me tell you. Mary had other children. Jesus Christ had brothers. And when you read John 7. You'll discover that even Jesus Christ's brothers. Do not believe in him. They don't think he's the real deal. They don't think that he's the answer to Israel's problems and to the nation and the world's problems. And they come to him and say, Jesus, are you coming up to the feast with us? And I love this. Jesus Christ says to them, no, go use on up because my time is not yet come. You see, Jesus Christ was working by a divine clock. It wasn't an earthly clock. It was the clock that was designed in heaven in eternity past by his Father God. And Jesus Christ knew that his time was not yet come. But then as you read through the passage, Jesus Christ makes him his way up to the feast. Now I want you to come. There's thousands of people here. Thousands of people. They've been celebrating this seven day feast. Now here's what has, is happening in this feast. Every single day, the priest is coming with the golden pitcher. He is walking out to the Gihon Springs. He's putting water in the pitcher. All the people follow him down. All the people follow him back. They're crying and singing out with joy. We will draw water from the wells of salvation. And Jesus Christ has now made his way to this feast. He's done a wee bit of teaching in the, the temple. And now he's just watching the people. Can you imagine? Thousands of people. Every day following the priest 
back and forward. Then the priest comes up and he pours the water onto the altar. And Jesus Christ just watches what religion does. Do you ever notice that religion's still the same? In the Bible it was the same, today it's the same. It's just ritualistic, it's just habit. People coming to church, doing their wee bit for the church, doing their wee part for the church on a Sunday, giving in their wee bit of money to the church. And it just goes on and on and back and forward. And so Jesus Christ, he watches this ritual. But then the verse I've read you, on the last day, the most important day. Why is that verse recorded? Here's why. Jesus is standing. He's watching the people. And on this day, they don't just go once to the Gihon Springs and back to the, the altar and pour the water on. They go up and down seven times because it's the last day. And on the very last time, the seventh time, just as the priest pours the water onto the altar, and Jesus watches the people. He feels sorry for the people going through all this stuff. And he sees that they're just doing religion. He steps into the arena. And he cries with a loud voice. On the very last day. On the seventh time. After watching all that ritualistic stuff. Jesus shouts with his loud voice. If any of you are thirsty. Come to me. And drink. I can quench your thirst. Can you imagine how the people must have felt? You see they've been so used to doing all this stuff. They're trying to earn their favour with God through religion. They're doing the stuff. They're ticking the T's and dotting the I's. And they think it's earned them favour. And Jesus just steps in in one moment. And he just does away with the whole thing. And he says look folks. Religion cannot do anything for you. No matter how many times you go back and forward to the Gihon Springs and pour the water on the altar, it's never going to be enough. You have a thirst. Oh, people, listen, you have a thirst inside of you. Jesus said that only I can quench. Oh, isn't that wonderful? You see, folks, listen. I don't know if you've ever, ever been somewhere where it's really really hot and you're just lying in the heat and your mouth sticking just to your jaws and you always say boys i'm thirsty i could do with a good cold drink of water there's nothing as horrible as that feeling of just the dry mouth of being so thirsty and when you go to the tap isn't it lovely to go to the tap turn on the water and run it and drink that lovely cold drink you're satisfied in that moment of time. But there's a problem. Physically. You see in an hour's time. You'll be physically thirsty again. And you'll have to go and get another drink. And Jesus understands that there's a physical thirst. That can be quenched by a lovely cool drink of water. But he's telling the folk here. Listen. You've got a deeper thirst. It's a spiritual thirst. You've got this hunger and thirst within you that only I can satisfy. And you've got to come to me and drink. And so here's the message. The simple message tonight to you is this. Just like John, he always said that he longed. He was longing for a drink of beer to quench his thirst. Tonight, I'm asking, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for something to satisfy the innermost parts of your being, the innermost parts of your life? Do you know the things that cannot satisfy you? You know they're not doing it for you. They're giving you a false high. But you've got to keep going back and back and back again to top that high up. Listen, Jesus Christ, this very evening, wants you to come to him and drink. And when you read on in John 7, Jesus Christ says, I can quench your thirst. I can put something within you. But then he does something even more important because you see in this passage, he is speaking about the Holy Spirit. And he says, once the Holy Spirit comes in you, indwells you, then as a believer, you'll not only have the inflowing of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said you will have the outflowing of the Holy Spirit. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Christian, let me, let me ask you now, 
Are you thirsty for God? Are you thirsty for him? Are you really longing, longing as the deer pants after the water bricks? So my soul, my very being longs, pants after God. Are you thirsty for God? Because if you're not, there's something wrong. Spiritually, you need, you need to check yourself out because you've got to be thirsty, thirsty for God. Let me finish to those of you that will watch this that don't know Jesus Christ. He wants to satisfy your thirst. Now I've got to be faithful to my God and faithful to John who I was with today. You see in Luke 16, there's a man that is thirsty. And in life it says that he enjoyed the good things. In other words, let me put it into good old Ulster language. He lived the good life. He lived life. In other words, he was sucking diesel. You ever hear that expression? He was just the full of the pipe. Everything in his life was brilliant. But it says that the rich man died. You see, death's going to come to us all. It's going to come to John in a few weeks' time, but he's ready. It's going to come to me and it could come tonight to me. I don't know. It's going to come to you and it could come tonight to you and you don't know. But this rich man in Luke 16, he dies. And it says in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment. In torment. Here's what he cries. Send Abraham. Abraham, send Lazarus. This message that he sends, it goes to Abraham. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. You see, folks, the rich man that had it all, the full of the pipe, the big barns, the big house, the big money, the big cars, all the women, the big rich man that had it all, he had nothing when it came to death. Because Christ, he had never met him in life to quench his thirst. And now he finds himself on the other side, in hell, in torment. And tonight, what date's today? Is it the 3rd of July or something? Tonight, on the 3rd of July, that very same man is still crying for the very same thing. A drop of water to quench his thirst. Folks, he didn't get it then. He didn't get it now. He'll never get it in all eternity. He's in hell and lost forever. When his thirst could have been quenched in life, he's got a thirst that will never be quenched for all eternity. Folks, listen, I want you to understand something. If you watch this video and never come to Christ that has cried, come to me, come to me, I'll satisfy your thirst. And you die without Christ and find yourself in hell. The very thing that you loved in life, be that pornography, be that cigarettes, be that drink, be that drugs, be that the next fix, the next high. The very thing that you sought after in life will be the thing that will plague your mind and torment you throughout all eternity. And you'll never get the fix. You'll never get your addiction satisfied. And it, would be, it wouldn't be so bad if it was only a year that you had to go through that torment. And you knew the fix or the high or the addiction was going to be satisfied in a year's time. It'd be alright if it was five years, ten years. Let me tell you, it's eternity. You will be tormented. Look on that fix forever. I'm finished. The message from Mark and from John tonight is this. God, through Jesus Christ, his son, can set you free. Are you thirsty? Jesus Christ can quench it. Jesus Christ can break your addiction. Oh, come. Come this very night. Did you notice Jesus didn't go until it was his time? You see, God works by a great time scale, as I said. And I believe there's a time when God speaks to individuals. And he's speaking to you right now. 
not saved, saying, come to me, I'll quench your thirst. Believer, he's speaking to you right now. Stop mucking about. Stop being involved in the secret sins. God already knows. Who are you kidding? Just yourself. And it's robbing your fellowship and robbing your enjoyment and robbing your influence and your destiny that God has for you. Come right now. Thirst after God. Come before him. In Jesus' name. Bless you folk. Remember what I've said. If you want folk to journey with you, if you're struggling and you don't know who to talk to, in confidence, contact. There's a wee number in Lock Brickland's Facebook. Send them a private message. The folk there, me, I'll only be too glad to drive anywhere, anywhere, to see you, to journey with you, to help you find Jesus Christ and to help you find freedom and that thirst quenching answer Jesus and the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you folk. Amen.